Hi, I'm Ron Demko. I'm an engineer at Kyocera AVX. And today in the next few slides, I would like to present passive component advances for wide band gap semiconductors. Band gap semiconductors exhibit many advantages and among them are the ability to work at high voltage and power levels and high temperatures. All of this comes in a more efficient use of power and a smaller, lighter package. So it's very attractive to end system designers. With those advantages, passive components must improve in order for the overall system to realize the full advantage allowed by the wide band gap semiconductors. So we've identified seven trends where passives must improve, and we'll describe and document that capacitor progress in the next few slides. First, we'll look at the case of high voltage film capacitors. High voltage film caps could be broken into two different general ranges. The first is the highest of high voltage film caps. They could range up to 100 kilovolts and maybe have 612 microfarads of uh, capacitance. Usually they are defined by some amount of energy density, maybe 2000 joules per liter. These devices have con controlled self-healing. And of course, that's very important when we get to energy levels of that type of, of magnitude. Now there's a more common uh, value range for high voltage films, the ones that we use every day, maybe it's for AC filtering or, or maybe it's our uh, HEV caps or tuning and protection. But generally those caps have a voltage rating of less than 2000 volts. And typically they're about a uh, thousand microfarads or so in terms of their overall capacitance. They're miniature devices and like their high highest of high voltage power film cap counterparts, they also have a controlled self-healing. So it's important to note that these high voltage film caps are not going to fail in a dead short manner. They fail, or what we call failures, by dropping their capacitance over time. It's a very attractive failure mode, and because of that, they are working very efficiently and very safely in these high voltage applications. Now next, we will look at the case of miniature high voltage capacitors. We'll look specifically at ceramics and tantalum polymer and tantalum devices. In the world of high voltage ceramics, we can get very miniaturized high voltage parts. An 0805 might be the, the low end for a, uh, a high voltage part, and 3640 might be the practical high end of a discrete part. High voltage ceramics also come in radial packages or in stacked ceramics, but generally we could say that we can get up to about 5 kV on the high side, and the cap range is about 10 picofarads to 2.7 microfarads. They come in three different dielectrics from uh, stable to uh, and temperature compensating to X7Rs. Tantalum polymers and tantalums are a very interesting part to look at in terms of a high voltage trend. This is interesting because these technologies offer very low noise, very high stability, and five different form factors. But the fact that we can get higher voltages in these bulk caps that are miniature and stable is quite attractive. So generally speaking, we can say that they're available in 0402 or bigger, voltages up to 125 volts, and cap value is quite large, up to 1500 microfarads. All of that combines to offer designers an option for very small, stable bias banks on uh, GAN uh, transistors and things like that. Now, next, we'll look at the high temperature trend. And here again, we've broken it down into ceramics and uh, tantalum devices. From a ceramic point of view, a lot of work's been going on in terms of dielectric formulations. And we could get capacitors that are ranging from negative 55 to 250C in high voltage, up to 1,000 volts. So now you see we have a high temperature, high voltage part, tremendously attractive to the industry. The value range is commonly 2.2 nanofarads to about 340 microfarads, and they could be discrete or stacked devices. Now, in the world of tantalums, quite a bit has been happening in terms of dielectric formulation, process improvement and packaging. But we could say that there are high temperature tantalums that go from negative 55 to 230C, cap values all the way up to 560 mics, and voltages up to 100 volts. Now there's derating that has to be applied at temperature, 
It's, it's not very complicated. There's some excellent charts that explain what needs to be done. It's still quite attractive in circuit. And what we have is a miniature, highly stable bulk capacitor with quite good uh, voltage characteristics. The RMS current capability is an interesting, important topic to talk to. This slide actually talks about ESR directly. Now, whenever we drop ESR on a capacitor, we increase its RMS current capability. So what we'll look at this is, is in terms of an ESR at 100 kilohertz, and we'll look at the temperature, temperature dependency to talk about the stability and relative ESR from one technology to the next. As you'd expect, ceramic capacitors have the lowest ESR, uh, but then followed by tantalum polymers. We look at a 10 mic 50 volt polymer and a 22 mic 35 volt polymer. And on the top two lines, we show a 10 mic 50 volt traditional tantalum part and a 10 mic 35 volt traditional tantalum part. So what we could see is what, what we know, right? That the tantalum polymers have a lower ESR than that of traditional tantalums. Uh, by the way, the upper left photo shows that we could stack individual parts to further reduce the ESR increase the cap rating, so we can end up with quite impressive amounts of capacitance in uh, small vertical packages. Bottom line, though, as you'd expect, MLCCs have the lowest ESR, tantalum polymers have a very improved and low ESR, and MNL2s still are very attractive, good ESRs, but this puts all of their relative performance into perspective. Now, we'll continue the ceramic theme and we'll look at two things. Um, first, the upper right chart shows the ESR comparison between some bulk capacitors. We look at aluminum in the first column, a tantalum in the second column. The third column shows a, a different voltage aluminum. And the two right columns on the table on the top uh, show the uh, ESR of ceramic capacitors in two different uh, stack. Uh, value ranges. As you'd expect, the ceramics have a low ESR. It's further uh, low across the frequency spectrum. That's quite attractive. Now, the photo on the left shows a method where we could actually reduce the ESL of a stacked ceramic capacitor in circuit. Now, those two parts are identical, and the first part is used in a very traditional um, Voltage, uh, voltage rail and, and ground rail configuration where we've connected directly uh, the part across VCC and ground. The second part of the photo, the bottom part of the photo, shows a low inductance configuration where we have that same part uh, straddling broken grounds and broken uh, VCC rails. Essentially, the lead frame of that ceramic capacitor is used to complete the VCC rail and the ground rail. And by doing that, we reduce the overall loop inductance of the part. It drives the inductance of the part down by about a factor of two. It increases the frequency response of that device. And in terms of the concept of uh, you know, loop uh, inductance on ceramic capacitors or any other capacitor, the bottom right uh, depiction shows uh, that termination configurations and electrical configurations can further reduce loop inductance. As, as a point of interest, we can get capacitive inductances down to 35 picohenries, and sometimes even below with playing with inductance uh, reduction through, through those loop methods. We'll continue on novel packaging. Novel packaging itself can drive the uh, loop inductance lower, the overall inductance of the part lower. Um, in this particular case, we're looking at stacked ceramics. The ceramic could be stacked in either a vertical or a horizontal configuration. Uh, that we're talking about the electrodes within the part. And those devices have multiple different case size and, and uh, packaging uh, options available. But generally speaking, these are relatively low inductance bulk caps. We can get up to 500 volts and up to 1300 microfarads. So they're quite attractive in terms of offering a spectrum of options for the designers. Next, we'll talk about a novel package, which is a hermetic package for tantalum capacitors. Uh, that allows us to isolate the inner tantalum element quite uh, heavily from the outside world. In the case of tantalums, 
that allows us to come up with high temperature tantalums up to 230C. In the, ta in the case of uh, tantalum polymers, it allows us to come up with high reliability parts, low ESR parts, and quite a value range of devices allowed. No slide or discussion of bulk caps for uh, wide bag gap semis would be complete without looking at electrolytics. In this slide, we look at miniature electrolytics, miniature surface mount parts that are made either with a, a wet electrolytic, a polymer, or a hybrid electrolytic. But basically, we could say that these miniature surface mount parts could operate from negative 55 to 125C in voltages less than or uh, up to uh, 400 volts and capacitance values of about uh, 6,800 microfarads or less. This slide shows the ease at which you could place those miniaturized cans on a printed circuit board. Of course, they're very attractive in a variety of power conversion circuits. And that concludes our discussion of the progress made on, on capacitors relative to the trends needed to support wideband gap semiconductors. Thank you very much for attending.